In China, frustration at zero COVID has escalated to outright anger. This is the world's largest iPhone factory in Zhengzhou, a city of nearly 7 million who were today told to stay home for five days as part of a war of annihilation against COVID. But the battle is now the workers against their employers, Foxconn. Barriers used as weapons, not containment, after employees complained of not just late payments, but a lack of medical care inside, where people have complained of sharing dormitories with COVID-positive people. Foxconn has said that is patently untrue. Last month, the virus had seen the site locked down, forcing workers to break out and march home. Since then, lockdowns have spread once more, including in parts of the capital, Beijing, as the country reports its highest number of daily COVID infections. And so China, the rising superpower of the future, right now still looks more like our recent lockdown past. All this just two weeks after authorities had shortened the quarantine period for close contacts, the first sign of an easing of its strict zero COVID strategy. Only by easing the COVID restrictions can people live a normal life. Otherwise, everything is on hold. How many people have the savings to support them if things continually stay this way? Even if you have the money to stay at home every day, that's not true living. That's lingering on the last breath of air. At the Party Congress this month, Xi Jinping affirmed the communist commitment to zero COVID. But since then, he's also said he wants to restore normal production and living order as soon as possible. How worried do you think someone like Xi Jinping is? Because doesn't this policy, zero COVID, define him? The pressure on Xi Jinping is actually not overwhelming because he is putting the problems on the implementation, not on the policy itself. So there are problems. It is the people who are implementing it who have a problem not the supreme leader. The other problem for China is that vaccination rates remain low and their own vaccine is less effective. On a trip to Beijing, the German chancellor announced that the Pfizer vaccine would now be available, but only for foreigners living in China, not Chinese citizens. Why won't they approve the Pfizer vaccine for the rest of the country? Because Xi Jinping personifies the importance of China being successful taking the Chinese way. So it will have to be Chinese vaccines. As people gather to watch the World Cup and see maskless fans enjoying the football in Qatar, some wonder why the difference. But others here in Shanghai, which is no longer in lockdown, still defend the government strategy. I still have doubts about not wearing a mask when the repercussions of COVID are unclear, because I know many Taiwanese people who have previously been infected and I believe they are suffering the consequences. I believe we should reopen gradually and it is acceptable to maintain the zero COVID policy for the time being. For many, zero COVID has meant literally that. They've never had the virus and worry about ever getting it. And so for now, China appears stuck out in the cold, seemingly happy to be in its ever lonely bubble. And I'm joined now by author and Chinese cultural commentator Diane Wei Liang. Uh, the zero COVID policy has been watered down, obviously, but could it be dismantled entirely, do you think? It is possible at the moment, though, even though it's watered down only recently. And it has actually con uh, created a lot of confusion. One of the cities in southern China had closed uh, lockdown and then opened and then locked down again. So in itself, it's sort of trial and error. And you know, the West had, including a lot of Chinese, um, overseas Chinese hoping to visit families in China, had been waiting for the policy to change. Mm. But so far, the change is very slow in coming. And, and I, I think... Well, I wonder how much concern there is both in China and elsewhere about the damage that that's doing to the economy, and not just the Chinese economy, but the global economy. Global economy aside, it's absolutely devastating to the Chinese economy. The Chinese economy is forecast to grow 3.5% this year. That is the worst performance since 1976. On top of that, a lot of Chinese have lost their jobs. Unemployment among youth 
is near 20%. Mm. And it's really damaging Chinese economy. And it is something that everyone is asking, when would this policy change? And, and But as everything in China, it's all about politics. Right. Well, I'll come, come back to that in just a second. But in terms of the, the sort of simmering dissent, isn't there? Does that look like taking off in China? It's absolutely becoming much more prominent. And when Shanghai went into lockdown in April, and we've seen very little protests, but as the lockdown went on, frustrations grew. And more recently, um, during the People's Congress, um, we've seen reports of banners being raised over a bridge in Beijing, questioning zero COVID. Mm. And in the car, just the report that you just shown and there were protests and there had been you know, protests in China there had been absolute dissent regarding the zero COVID policy which had caused um, death in a baby for example who couldn't get medical uh, yeah. care and death in a bus that was transporting people to government quarantine centers that turned right. over and, and, and killed everyone on board.